Hey guys, this uh, recording is to show people how to set up scripting with Mimix. So first step is to download Python. Latest version of Mimix uses Python 3.8. So we've got the Windows installer and a Mac installer that'll work for versions 10.9 and up. So you go ahead and run an install on that and you can set it to the the default folder, um, wherever that is. And then what you're going to do is you're going to open uh, Mimix. And if you haven't installed this yet, you'll have a voucher code. So you're going to put that in. Um, and when you set up um, scripting for the first time, you're going to need to do go to File and Preferences. And under the scripting, button, which is the third one down, you're going to have to choose that the, the main Python folder as your interpreter path and then click OK. And if you were if you require um, installing any uh, Python packages on Windows, you have to open the command prompt and then you have to navigate to that folder. So you do CD c colon forward slash program space files this is just the default path that you would need to type this in python 3d forward slash scripts and then you would write pip install and then the package name so the packages that we would use are numpy and if it's already installed you'll get this message um, and then there's a, a few more that we install but that's how you would run the basic install of uh, Python, and then this commands, command prompt would be to add any packages that you need in your code. Other software you should download is something to write code in, which would be also called an IDE. And we would use uh, VS Code, which seems to be a popular IDE to use. So I'll just download this really quick and install that. And then we're using Python for the most part, so you can you can add some like Python extension onto this as well. All right, this is what Visual Studio looks like, and you can basically add um, a folder. To your workspace, and you can write all your all your scripts in there. And over here. So when you add the folder and you hit this uh, little explore tab, your folder will appear here. And you could add a new file. And if you put .py at the end, that'll make it uh, an actual Python file that you could run. And if you're going to run a script, then there's a script tab at the top of Mimix. And you can click Run Script. And then you just navigate to that folder. Um, you can also set up a scripts folder in the preferences tab. So you don't have to navigate to that every time. You can just select the folder. And then you can access those directly from this little scripting library down arrow. So you can run it right from there. Uh, if you want to learn more about 
how to do scripting in the help tab, there's a scripting guide. And when you click that, you'll get the um, API, which will show you all the codes that you can run. So if you needed to find a mask or whatever, this will be for Mimix. And then 3Matic would have the same type of um, API for 3Matic specific codes. So most of the time we're writing scripts in 3Matic, so you can do scripts in either Mimix or 3Matic for segmentation or the CAD. So. Ask. This would be like a common, common uh, function, and here would be like to create a mask. That might be like the first thing you do with segmentation. So you'll have this little chunk of code here, and you can just copy this, paste it into your code. So typically, the first things you would do are like importing libraries. So you just do it import, you know, whatever. Maybe it's and then you can paste that code that you've got, and you can make these equal to parameters. And you might do a like naming. So that would make like a new mask. So we can run that and see if it actually works. So there we go. It made a new mask and it renamed it what we wanted. Um, there's additional steps for thresholding. Which would be probably the first step that you would do after you make a new mask. Um, and thresholding also requires that you do some gray values. So usually um, these this uh, uh, DICOM images are in Hounds field units, and you need to actually use, or you can convert um, uh, using gray values instead. Um, and then typically you'd see an example of the code down at the bottom, which might be a little more easier to understand than the parameters that they're just throwing in here, because you might not know exactly what to put in there. So you can always look down and find some examples and you can also just like kind of copy and paste these in so this sets a parameter as the first mask in your list that little index of zero if we paste that um, this would threshold using the mask that we created so we could put mask one in there threshold would be from 100 to 3000 but I know bone is usually 226 as the low value for that and when you need to you know, like save this just hit control s and anytime you kind of make some new code or make some edits you'll see this little circle pop up here and when you hit control s to save it that'll go away um, if you need to comment out code you can use the hashtag symbol and it'll show up Let's run this one more time and we'll see if it actually does that thresholding step. All right, well, so it used a gray value here of the 226, but we actually wanted Houndsfield units, so you can see why we would need to convert um, Hounds, the gray value to Houndsfield units and use that instead. Um, so we could look over here to HU is the name of the code. So maybe we'll just type in GD so we can find it so here. So here's a little conversion. This, right? So we're going to go back to this code and we're going to say like um, <coughs> going to say low equals high and we'll put the, um, it'll, and we'll actually use the 
uh, gray values in the equation. So we want to convert Hound's field to gray value and use gray value. That would be And then we'll put the Hound's field in the So. So we can say the that the low value is actually two twenty six. So this would be like household unit. Oh, two five two, and then we can rename this what it'll actually be low grade value. More understandable, so I want my code to be readable. Um, make it so we still have the same. We want these to be our Hansfield units. The parameters into here. That's nice about this, is it kind of auto populates here. And then these are what we're going to put into here. So now it made a thresholding step based on what we put in. And this little button over here will show you a little preview of what that looks like. So we'll make some more videos and show you how to do some more advanced steps with scripting um, and the order of operations that you would use for segmentation.